Hello everybody, it's Emma and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm excited to talk to you about how I pack zero waste, my low waste travel essentials, and how we only manage to pack in carry-ons going on a two or more week trip. So I have a few videos already on this topic, my minimalist backpacking tips, my zero waste travel essentials, a few other zero waste travel videos, but I thought I'd wrap them all up into one as well as make a newer version because those videos are a little outdated. I've changed my packing habits since then, but if you wanna watch all of those, they'll all be linked down below. So let's go ahead and start with packing my clothing. So we are going on a two week trip to the mainland of Japan. If you wanna catch up on those travels, you can follow us on Emma and Dan on YouTube and Instagram. That's where we post all of our travel content. So I'll leave that channel link down below. We're gonna be staying in a camper van, so we don't have much storage. The other issue too is we are traveling all over Japan except for the northernmost island of Hokkaido. So we're going all the way down from Tokyo to Kyushu Prefecture and then back all the way up to Aomori Prefecture, which is the northernmost prefecture besides Hokkaido. That means we're gonna be in several different different climates over the course of 15 days. So we have to pack a lot of different clothing. So the key to this, the key to packing light is packing clothing that can be worn with multiple different outfits, multiple different combos, as well as in multiple different climates. So the warmest it's gonna be is in the 60s, so you can still wear a sweatshirt in that, as well as when you get down to the 20s and 30s, Fahrenheit, you wear that same sweatshirt, but just with a coat and a hat and gloves. So that's the key here, and that's always been the key with my minimalist packing routine, is to wear neutral colors like I normally wear, so that way I can, you know, wear this, I can wear this black shirt with gray pants, with jeans, with white pants, and then the same with pants. I can wear jeans with a black shirt, a white shirt, a gray shirt, whatever. That way I only have to pack like five or so tops and bottoms instead of 14 tops and bottoms when they're kind of mixed and match crazy outfits. So let's go ahead and pick out what I'm gonna wear. I have not thought much about this and we leave tomorrow. So I gotta get going. I've got two t-shirts and one, two, three, four sweatshirts. And I might throw in this t-shirt that I'm wearing as well. I've got four pair of pants. I've got two jeans. These are like nicer pants, but they're also super comfy. They feel like sweatpants and then a pair of sweatpants. I'm also 100% a person who goes for comfort over style all the time, but especially when traveling and especially on this trip because we're gonna be in the camper van most of the time. So I don't wanna be sitting in something uncomfortable just for a few cute photos for the gram. <laughs> I mean, I'm still gonna take cute photos, but I'm just gonna be in t-shirts and jeans. And then I've got my cold winter gear, sure. I'm gonna grab my coat and some warmer gloves as well, but I've got a headband, I've got mittens and a scarf. I've got several pair of thick socks. Of course, other undergarments. I've got a belt and then I also need to grab a pair of shoes because I'm going to wear tennis shoes. No, I'm gonna wear my boots and then pack tennis shoes and then wear the wear the bulkier ones. Um, that's another big tip too I have with packing minimalistly. <laughs> packing light is to wear your bulkiest things. So usually when I fly, I will wear, I will usually wear jeans, but this time I'm bringing sweatpants. So those are the bulkiest. I'll wear sweatpants, I'll wear a sweatshirt, I'll wear the coat, I'll wear the bulkiest shoes. So that way, I can have as much room in my bag as possible, and then my bag weighs a little lighter too. Oh, and then the other thing was shoes. I always try to find shoes that will go well with each outfit. So typically something black or gray. You know, boots and tennis shoes go well with pretty much everything. So that's what I'm bringing for shoes. Now I'm gonna start packing because I at least have all the bulky things that I wanna pack, but I can't finish packing until I do laundry because there's a few undergarments I need still. <laughs> Let's get to packing, and then after I pack, I'll show you my zero waste essentials. Real quick, the other tip I have is to roll your clothes. This kind of depends on what you wanna go for. So for me, I wanna pack as much in my bag as possible. But for example, Dan, he does not roll his clothes anymore in case we find something else that we wanna fit in our bags. And then he'll roll his clothes on the way home so that that way we still have room for our souvenirs and whatnot, plus the clothing. So that, cause you know, if, if I roll my clothes and I pack my bag all the way to the brim, I don't usually do that, but if I do that, then we don't have any room for anything that we might buy. Okay, so much for packing. Mooch, I have to pack. Excuse you. You want this basket? Here, go in here. Another tip I have too is to start with the bulkiest items because, you know, they're the hardest to squeeze in later. So, for example, I start with my sweatshirts and then my pants and then t 
t-shirts and undergarments follow up because they can sneak into those little cracks that you can't otherwise fill with these bulkier items. Okay, while I was rolling, I decided that I'm just gonna wear the black t-shirt I have with the sweatpants and the coat. Well, it would make most sense to wear this big bulky sweatshirt and my coat. It's still like 70, 80 degrees here in Okinawa and I don't really wanna die of heat exhaustion before we even make it to the plane. So normally when Dan and I pack together, we can actually just share one carry-on because of how we've come to wear our clothes and determine what we like to wear while we travel. So we've been able to learn how to pack really, really light and only use one carry-on for like a three to five day trip. But since we're gonna be gone for about 15 days in multiple climates, we decided that this would be best. So this is my main bag with all of my clothing, but I'm also gonna be bringing a book bag because as we'll probably see soon, this isn't gonna have too much more room in it. So I'm gonna need to use my book bag for things like my Kindle and my phone charger and my toothbrush. Small things um, that just might not fit in here at the end, but we will see. And then another thing too, when we travel, so you know, it, your, your pants might get a little gross if you wear them for four days in a row. So we'll just wash items in our hotel, Airbnb, hostel, shower, and then just leave them to hang up. But this time, we're staying in a van that does not have a shower. So what we're gonna do is, once we get settled for the night, we get our campground and so forth, we're gonna find a laundromat and then do a quick load of laundry if necessary. Especially when it comes to undergarments because I don't wanna have to pack 15 undergarments if I don't need to. Like I said, I'm still waiting on a few things to be washed, but that is pretty much it for clothing. Now let's focus on my personal item and my zero waste travel essentials. So I've never used this bag before, so we're gonna see how it goes. Um, I actually just, no, I, I didn't thrift this one. I found this one in the trash. This bag, look how nice it is and cute in someone's trash. It's now my treasure, let's pack it. I didn't go get any zero waste essentials. I got distracted in the bathroom. I don't normally pack two toiletry bags, but I also don't normally stay for two weeks. So let me show you a quick tour of my low waste bathroom travel essentials. First, we have an upcycled pill container full of cotton swabs. Yeah, I know the cotton swabs aren't the most low waste thing, but I, I just got some new piercings, so I have to take care of them while we're on the trip with um, this contact solution and an upcycled, this had like tattoo ointment in it, so I kept it and now it's got saline solution in it and those two are for cleaning my piercings while traveling in a low waste-ish way. I've got my menstrual cup. I've got my concentrated body bar for easy TSA approved moisturizer. And then of course that works for all around moisturizer, moisturizing. I've also got my concentrated shampoo bar that I had to cut in half in order to fit into this case. And then lastly in this bag is my bunch of farmers body wash. And then in the second bag, these aren't really low waste, but I did get this second hand, this sunscreen. Figured I might as well bring that for like at least my face. I don't know what kind of weather we're gonna have. My little teeny bit of perfume that I have left also found this dumpster diving, I think. My Bunch of Farmers stain stick. This is really gonna come in handy, especially since we're gonna go a few days without washing our clothes sometimes. So if we get a stain, we can get it out real quick. I've got my toothpaste, which might not look zero waste from the outside, but I've had this tube for literal years and I just refill it with my bigger ones. All you do is put your bigger one right on top and then squeeze it into there. Maybe puff some air in there to get it all the way down. It works and now I don't have to buy these little ones over and over again. I've got like my standard makeup that you don't need to see because it's, it's not zero waste. I'm still using it from like high school. Another upcycled pill container this time with dry shampoo. It does not, it looks like drugs, but I promise it's just dry shampoo. And again, since I'm not gonna be showering every single day, she's gonna need some help. I think this is my last zero waste item. The rest are just regular items. And this is an upcycled razor case that I used to use. I used to use these razors before I went zero waste. Now it serves as my travel pill case. So I don't have to buy a pill case and this gets to stay out of the landfill. And then yeah, everything else is just band-aids, cotton swabs, bobby pins, hair ties, tweezers, regular travel stuff. Now out to my car to get my stuff.
Okay, I'm ready, I think. I'm gonna go through the items I have already that I grabbed, and then I'll look at my list of things to pack after my reusable water bottle. Now, I'm not really gonna pack this yet because I'm still drinking out of it today, <laughs> but this is essential no matter what country you're going on, whether it's a day trip, weekend trip, month trip, always my reusable water bottle. And it's so easy to get a refill anywhere. You just simply walk up a gas station, a convenience store, a restaurant, your front desk of the hotel, the restaurant of the hotel, whatever. You just ask them and say, hey, can I get some water in this, please? Some places will do it for free. Some places might charge you a dollar or two. It's not that much to save so much plastic while you're traveling. This is definitely key, especially in Japan, because it's so hard to avoid plastic when it comes to food in Japan. So if we can do our best to consume no plastic water bottles on our trip, that's a huge win, at least in Japan. Similar to that is my reusable coffee cup. They're called the big four water bottles, coffee cups, utensils, and bags. They're the four most commonly used single-use items. So I always make sure to pack reusables for those big four with me when I travel or even just go out for a day trip. And inside, which I have to take out because the Japanese TSA won't like that, is my bag of instant coffee. It's, it's not the best coffee in the world, but it'll do the trick for my caffeine addiction I gave myself. So I figured, let's go ahead and throw my toiletries in here. And then next, hold on. Okay, this bag is huge. Okay, next is my Kindle, my e-reader. Again, I talked about this in my first iteration of this video. You might be wondering, why is this zero waste too? Well, I got it secondhand, and then it also prevents you from wanting to buy any sort of media in the airport. Whatever it may be, this way I have all of my entertainment ready to go with me, and it prevents me from wanting to buy anything else. And then it takes up so much less room than a conventional book, meaning I can fit more in my bag, and my bag could be potentially way lighter because of this, meaning less emissions burned from the airplane. It's a small amount, but it is less. So I had a few people ask me about making a video like this on Instagram and I don't know how far in depth people wanted me to go. I'll typically put like water bottles on the outside. Ooh, that reminds me, I need to bring an umbrella because I'll show you once I'm done packing. Once I pack everything in the middle, it kind of leaves a little cup holder for the water bottles and then I'll put anything less important on the bottom meaning things I'm not gonna get out on the plane, like my toiletries, and then things like my headphones, my passport, I'll put that on top so it's easily accessible. Speaking of, is my passport and passport holder. This isn't necessarily zero waste because we bought this on Amazon before we decided to go zero waste, so it's definitely not the best material, but Having a carrier like this is key because it helps your passport to last longer, as well as it looks a little more inconspicuous than just your passport lying around. Looks like Mochi chewed on it. Thank you, Mochi. But this helps my passport last longer, so I don't need to get a new one replaced until that time actually comes. Next is my bag of electronics. Again, not necessarily zero waste, but I guess something I do wanna point out. To keep my cords from getting all tangled, I use upcycled hair ties and rubber bands. This was in a list of things that cannot be recycled. I'll leave that video linked up here. And instead, trying to worry about, oh, how do I recycle rubber bands? Just reuse them. Sunglasses, in this case, I got from Walmart years ago. Again, nothing special. But the case is important because it does help my sunglasses last longer. One of my favorites, my utensils, my to-go utensils. And now, I talked about this in Things I Hate About Zero Waste, is bamboo utensils. And that's because this was, I think after my water bottle, this was the first zero waste swap that I bought. And I caved. I got the bamboo utensils on Amazon because they're the aesthetic. I really do not like my bamboo utensils because like look at this spoon you can't even it's so small you cannot even focus it won't even focus on it but like there's no dip in it the fork is not sharp the knife is not sharp going back i would just use some silverware that i already had in my kitchen but since i already bought these i'm gonna get the most use out of them that i can and they'll really come in handy in our van and hiking and stuff and then also I got some chopsticks at a secondhand store. They were brand new, but secondhand. Those reusable chopsticks come in so much handy in Japan because they always, always have the single use ones. What else? Ooh, this bag has a lot of goodies in it. Several reusable masks with me. This sure wasn't in my first iteration of low waste travel essentials, and that is a reusable mask. My reusable bag. You can take whatever reusable bag you want. I just take this one because it wraps up super small like this. I've also got several homemade reusable tissues slash hankies. They come in handy for everything from like a reusable napkin, literally if I need to blow my nose. Again, another one of these razor cases that I'm using as a pill case, hand sanitizer, which isn't zero waste, um, chapstick that's not zero waste, and like my aux cord and my phone charger, my car charger. I know I said this was gonna be zero waste travel essentials, but I decided I'm just gonna show you everything just for funsies. And the last thing I have to show you is 
my yen. So we have our cash yen, but, and with the yen currency, they go all the way up to the equivalent of $5 in coins. So having a coin purse is key. And it's not zero waste, but we're gonna use it until it's completely done. And that's just, I just wanted to show you that this is one of my travel essentials, a coin purse. The moment of truth. Did I check everything off of my list? Underwear, socks, bras, gloves, earmuffs, scarves, sweatshirts, jeans, sweatpants, a jacket, no. I'm not packing a jacket. I'm just gonna do my sweatshirts and a coat, my Kindle and charger, my watch and charger, my phone charger, and that's it. I hit all the bases, good for me. Okay, that is it. I packed everything for two weeks besides like the things I'm gonna wear in this book bag and this rolling bag, she's slim. And then Dan is gonna do the same thing. He's gonna bring one rolling bag and one book bag, but his book bag is gonna be like 80% camera gear. And then he'll probably throw in like his water bottle and some sweatshirts, whatever. And then he pretty much has the same routine as me, packing as light as possible, packing clothes that can be reworn over and over again, shoes that can be worn with every outfit, and then his zero waste travel essentials as well, with which differ slightly from mine because he doesn't drink coffee. We share those utensils. So he just brings pretty much his water bottle. That is all that I have for today. I really appreciate you coming along on this video and seeing what I pack, how I pack light, how I pack zero waste. Ooh, I forgot one thing. One other thing I bring with me is my zero waste phrases <laughs> in Japanese. Obviously it's, it's easier to travel zero waste in a country of your native language, but something that <laughs> is honestly probably the first things I learned in Japanese when moving here is things like no bag please can I use this cup and then other sorts of vegan phrases too like no meat please do you have a vegan option and so forth and I have videos for both of those zero waste phrases in Japanese and then vegan phrases in Japanese and then on my blog as well I have phrases in Japanese for tourists. So check all those resources out if you're traveling within Japan later, cause Japan still hasn't opened their borders. <laughs> and again, if you wanna catch any of our adventures, specifically this van trip that we went on by the time you see this, go follow us and subscribe to our channel, Emma and Dan. It is gonna be our travels. I'm very excited to vlog more in the US and stay tuned over on that channel for some fun United States adventures. As you can kind of tell by our bare bedroom, we've gotten rid of a lot of stuff and that's because we've already started decluttering and packing to move because we move in about three months. So stay tuned for that video. I'm so excited for it. It is an entire home declutter and how I'm moving sustainably-ish because I am moving like 6,000 miles. So it's not gonna be the most sustainable by any means, but I'm gonna show you how I do it with a little bit less of an impact. In that video, probably coming out May or June-ish. Thank you for watching. I appreciate all the time you've dedicated to this video, especially if you made it all the way to the end. If you're new here and you like all sorts of things, zero waste, I focus particularly on practical sustainability, which is free, easy, and fun ways to live zero waste. And I post new videos every Monday and Thursday, Japan Standard Time, which is Sunday and Wednesday in the US. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Let me know your zero waste travel essentials down below or if you have any better packing tips than I do, any different packing tips so that we can encourage everyone to travel more sustainably. I also have an entire sustainable travel playlist linked up here where I talk about all sorts of things like I talked about today as well as things like over tourism and stuff like that. I appreciate your time and until next time, remember that these small changes you make have a big impact on the long run. Bye guys. I cannot tell what this looks like. That's, that's pretty nice. Okay, I need to go do some hunting for all of my things. So I'll be right back. Where'd that come from? No mochi. I don't know what that's for. Whenever you see me do this, I promise I'm not picking my nose. I'm fixing my nose piercing. Very small, but there's a lot less. No, I don't know. They don't. Hmm. I'm very excited to try out to. I hope this is recording. Um, 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 um. I'm thirsty. Let me. I need my water.